Persona 3 is a special game. It is special because Persona 3 revamped the entire Persona series into what we know it as today. It is special because Atlas as a company wouldn't be the same without it. It is special because it keeps getting new fans who love it for all the reasons those who played it all the way back in 2006, and new fans who love it for all new reasons. There are few games as beloved and talked about in the RPG space as Persona 3, from its revolutionary blend of social sim and dungeon crawler to the way it mixes the story and gameplay into compelling themes that drive the narrative forward. It has lovable characters, a mesmerizing presentation, and a strong legacy. For all these things and more, Persona 3 is a special game, and thus it deserves a special video. That's why this video is not just a video on why you should play Persona 3 Reload, which I just finished playing, but a video on why you should play Persona 3 in whatever form you are able and willing to play it in. Let's get started. Persona 3 is the fourth game in the Persona series, and the first one under new director Katsura Hashino, who proceeded to direct Persona 4, 4 Golden, 5, and 5 Royal. Persona 3 did still have the Shin Megami Tensei title for its original release, which is the series that Persona is a spin-off series from. The original Persona 3 release came out in 2006 for PS2 in Japan, 2007 in North America, and 2008 in Europe and Oceania. It was followed shortly after by Persona 3 Fez in 2007 in Japan and 2008 everywhere else, which added some bits and bobs such as hard mode, but the main selling point was the playable epilogue called The Answer. In 2009, the game received a new version released for the PlayStation Portable titled Persona 3 Portable. In order for the release to work on a portable device, P3P removed the 3D environments to explore around in for the day, and adopted more of a visual novel style for gameplay outside of exploration and battle. The answer epilogue was also not included in the PSP release, however P3P did add an entirely new route with a female main character that had a whole new set of social links with party members and some entirely new characters for the FMC to interact with. That release came west in 2010 or 2011, depending on region, and Portable was also ported to Switch, PS4, PC, Xbox One, and the Xbox Series in 2023. Late in 2023, the announcement was made that rocked the Persona 3 fanbase. Persona 3 Reload was announced to be coming out in 2024, a full remake of the original game. It would feature many of the changes found in releases such as Fez and Portable, although it would not have the female MC, and the answer epilogue would come out later as DLC titled Episode Igus. That remake was released on February 2nd, 2024 for PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox One, and the Xbox Series. Those are the four versions of the game we will be talking about today. To give a quick idea of how I will refer to them, Original P3, P3 Fez, P3 Portable, and P3 Reload. Sometimes I'll just call them Fez or Reload since it's obvious I'm talking about Persona 3, but that's the version history for this game. As for success, the game was an incredible critical success on every stop of its journey. Portable probably got the least love because of the limitations of the PlayStation Portable, but was still considered a fun game with a lot of new content to serve new and old fans alike. Now let's get into the game itself. We'll start with an area of the game where there is a lot of overlap between versions, and that is the story. The story begins with our player character arriving as a transfer student at Gekukan High on Tatsumi Port Island. That first night when they arrive, they encounter some strange happenings, such as upright coffins in the street and a creepy boy who greets them as they enter the dorm. All of this is as a result of the Dark Hour, a secret hour added on to each day that most people are unaware of, but a special few are awake during this time and are witness to the shadows that roam around. The shadows have been increasing in activity and strength, and a group has formed to fight back against them called the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or C's for short, using their personas. After awakening to their persona via an evoker that does look like a gun, the protagonist joins the team as they face down the shadows and explore the giant tower called Tartarus that replaces the school during the dark hour. Each month brings more allies to the cause as well as more challenges from the shadows. Will Seas be able to successfully eliminate the shadows, Tartarus, and the Dark Hour? Or will the world succumb to the apathy syndrome affecting the victims of shadow attacks? Persona 3's story is at its strongest when it is intertwining the themes of death, 
hope, the bonds we share with others, and the struggle against the seemingly impossible between the main story and its gameplay. I'll get into more of the gameplay side of things when we reach that section, but for the story and writing, this is the reason so many fans think Persona 3's story is the strongest in the series. From day one in-game, Persona 3 gives this oppressive atmosphere that weighs on the player and makes you understand why so many of the characters in the party and out are struggling with demons internal and external. Through the painful process of mutual loss and a unified struggle, the members of Seas turn from individuals struggling to coalesce into a proper team that have weathered the storm to reach the top. The twists and turns of the story will lead the player across the spectrum of emotions from beginning to end and leave an indelible mark on the psyche. This starts with a group of believably flawed but lovable characters and is enhanced by how every aspect of the game ties into the themes I talked about before. This is seen throughout the main narrative, but every side adventure, every character that you encounter ties into the themes of Persona 3 in a way that future games and other RPGs have struggled to emulate. It is a masterclass of all-around storytelling, and that's just for the main part of the game called The Journey. For opinions on the answer, you might have to ask someone who has actually played it. The structure between the various versions of Persona 3's day-to-day -day life is pretty similar. You'll attend classes, except on Sundays, occasionally answer questions from your teachers and get through the day, and then the real fun begins. During the afternoon is the time you spend hanging out with the various characters to increase your social links with them. Some of this is just hanging out with them as individuals, and some from going to clubs. Reload did reduce the number of club options from the original, but the social links remain for each of them. The bonds in the social link writing has some of the best writing in the game, and some of the worst, but overall they're still good. You could also do various activities, although these may be better saved for nighttime when you don't have many people to hang out with and therefore can spend it doing more things like working at the cafe, studying, or singing karaoke. Those activities can give you stuff like money while also increasing your social stats, academics, charm, and courage. Some of them do cost money though, instead of giving it. Some responses in dialogue and social links are locked if you do not have a high enough level in a particular social stat, but it's not too restrictive overall. You do also need to pay attention to your academics when exam time comes along to make sure you pass and not disappoint Mitsuru. The other thing you can do at night though is exploring Tartarus. The giant tower, and I really do mean giant, where you can train to prepare yourself for the next big full moon event. All of that is the same structurally across every version of Persona 3. So let's get into the nuance of how the versions differ within this overall schedule. Starting with social links. In all Persona games from 3 and beyond, the social links you form are a mix between party members and people in the general community in which you live in. Persona 3 started that trend, but original Persona 3 and Fez did have a different structure when it came to the romances that you can have in the game. For the main character, any social link with an appropriately aged female character will be a romance if you increase it far enough. There is no platonic option. If you max out Yukari, Mitsuru, and Fuka's social links, you are dating them. But you might not even get that far. Why not? Well, the original and Fez have a mechanic called the jealousy mechanic, which can lead to reversing the social link. This can also happen if you pick a bad answer in certain dialogue choices. It sounds harsh, but the mechanic wasn't too bad overall and pretty easy to work around if you were careful. Portable removed the jealousy mechanic and it did not return for reload either. Portable also gave the option now for platonic bonds with party members as well as adding in the female MC route. That route came with all new non-romantic social links for the female characters, entirely new social links with the male party members, the male MC cannot build social links with any male party members, and some all new characters from the community. Oh, hey Ryo! You can choose to romance the male party members as the female main character, and they do also have a platonic route as well. Reload did not keep the female MC route, but it did rework social links with female characters to be optional for romance, as well as adding in bonding events with male party members. It's not a proper social link, but these events give a lot more chances to get to know characters like Junpei or Ken than the original or Fez ever gave. This is one of the points though that makes Portable still a viable option to play because the female MC root with its different social links really changes up the experience. Plus, if you want to romance Akihiko, Portable's the only way. Sorry folks. 
As for the night events, one of the biggest critiques of the original Fez and Portable was that there were very few things to do at night, especially once you have maxed out your social stats and the few social links that are only possible to complete at night. Reload tried to address this by including more general bonding events with your party members at night, which was a welcome addition. These aren't part of the social link, but they do sometimes give bonuses, plus more time with these characters is always a treat. In general, the cast of Persona 3 is really good in my opinion. The main cast is particularly great, and some of the side characters are incredible. Incredible. Other side characters are not so great, but you do have to play along with their flaws in order to get them to like you and give you social link bonuses that you can then use for your personas to be better in battle. So, you know, you're getting something from it at least. The bonds between the characters and the way that they interact with each other that can lead to conflict and a resolution between the members of Seas and the strong overall character arcs that they each undergo over the course of the main story is one of Persona 3 best qualities. With that established, let's talk about gameplay, because this is where some of the biggest changes between different versions of the game appear. When I refer to gameplay, I mean the actual combat and the exploration of Tartarus. Tartarus is pretty much the same across every game. You start out at the bottom and work your way to the top. As you're going through, there will be standard levels with treasure and enemies that are randomly generated. Then there are the gatekeeper bosses you faced off against as a bigger challenge, and finally the border floors, which signal a change for the next area. The border floors are also a cap on how high you can go until the next month opens up the next set of floors. But otherwise, the games are pretty similar with regards to how they handle Tartarus. Reload added in some crystal structures you can hit to get possible items, and adjusted how you can get an advantage by hitting enemies. Reload also added in monad doors, which have very strong enemies and very good rewards at the end. I think this was added in to increase the challenge because a lot of combat changes Reload brought in made the main game a lot easier. Monad passages are the doors, but even more, with greater rewards at the end. There is a clock at the beginning of Tartarus in all versions that allows you to heal up your party's HP and SP fully. In original Fez and Portable, this costs money. In Reload, it costs Twilight Fragments, which you can get from exploring or given to you by Elizabeth, the Velvet Room attendant. After an exploration of Tartarus in original Fez and Portable, your character's condition can go down and you can become fatigued or even sick. When that happens, you have to rest instead of going out and probably shouldn't do another exploration of Tartarus until you're feeling better, or you will suffer. This mechanic was entirely removed for Reload, and the nurse trips and sleeping in class no longer improve your condition, instead giving you other bonuses. My favorite change for Reload was giving the navigator Fuka some skills that she could use to help you outside of battle, from boosting your defense and evasion for the next fight, to scanning the whole floor ahead of you. All highly useful. Most of these changes are minor though, and the experience is fairly similar. The same cannot be said for battle. In original and Fez, the only character you control in battle is the MC. Every other character is controlled by the AI, although you can give tactical directions to them after a certain point that will hopefully stop them from using certain skills at inopportune times. In Portable, the option was added to control every party member, and in Reload, that is the default mode. I never played with AI-controlled party members, but my friend Lady Virgilia made a video that, among other points, highlights why the combat system makes sense for Fez, so check that out if you want to learn more. Obviously, this is a big change, and severely reduces the difficulty of the game when you can fight more optimally. To combat this, Portable added in a very hard difficulty mode called Maniac Mode, as well as a very easy mode, and Reload generally boosted enemies' health and abilities, especially certain bosses. I still found Portable and Reload rather easy, but that's just me. Reload also changed up how light and dark skills worked. In the first three versions of the game, light and dark skills were auto-kills if they hit. Those skills still remain, but Reload added in standard light and dark attacks that just do damage as well. This affects both the enemies and our allies who have these skills. Reload revamped a lot of the party members' movesets to fit with the changes and roles in the party, and added in new, super powerful moves called Thurgies. These are unique to each character and can only be used when the Thurgy gauge is full. On top of all that, Reload added in Shift, which allows a party member who has hit an enemy's weakness to pass their turn off to someone else. All of these tools at your disposal really helps you demolish the enemies in front of you, hence why I believe Reload is even easier than Portable, despite the boost to some enemies. It is fun to watch and play though, very flashy and satisfying. 
After battle, you get a shuffle time, which allows you to get rewards such as more experience or money. This card game did actually shuffle in original Fez and Portable, but reload you can just pick them regularly. Still called shuffle time though, which is a bit odd. While the rewards are pretty straightforward, there are new ones in Reload around the Tarot Arcana cards which give specific bonuses to your party. If you collect enough of them, you can get an Arcana Burst, which increases the potency of all the regular shuffle time cards. I like the addition of giving more useful cards and therefore more tough choices for the players. I just don't see why they couldn't have had them shuffle too. Shuffle time is also when you get new personas for your main character. As with every game in the series, the personas you control with your main character will be very important to your overall success in battle. You collect personas from battle and then can take them to the Velvet Room to fuse together into more powerful versions. The main character is the only one who can change personas. Everyone else has a set persona that they use for the entire game that develops over time. But you are the wild card and can switch between them. So you want a variety of different personas because they can give you boosts in battle as well as boosts to your social link development. If you have a persona of the arcana of the person that you are bonding with, you increase the social gains you get from that interaction. Anyone who's played a Persona game before will be familiar with the fusing system that you do in the Velvet Room. You take two or more Personas, sacrifice them in flashy style, and create a new one, which can inherit some of the skills. Depending on your player character's gender, you can have either Elizabeth for male MCs, or a choice between Elizabeth and Theodore for female MCs as the Velvet Room attendants. In addition to helping with fusing, Elizabeth and Theodore give you side quests and tasks to complete, and you have outings you can go on with them. It's not a proper social link and does not take up your time when you go on dates with them, but they're both fun characters to be around, so I recommend spending time with them when you can. With all of that said, let's finally turn our attention to the area that has the most obvious changes between versions, the presentation. The differences between original Persona 3 and Fez are negligible on presentation, so the main comparison is between those two, Portable, and Reload. All of the games have nice art and design for their time and the limitations of their console. There's a reason Reload didn't feel the need to change the characters' looks all that much, since they are very well defined and dressed. The environments, though, have far more differences between the three versions we're talking about. Portable, in part because you don't really get to explore the environment since it is visual novel style, except for dungeon crawling. Reload departs from the other versions mainly because of how bright it is. Starting from the opening, every environment and every cutscene is brighter than the original, and while it looks nice, I will say that the original game and Portable were better at merging the environmental art and its lighting with the mood of the game. Persona 3 is not a light-hearted game most of the time, and certainly contrasting the light and dark is also an important part of the themes, but reload upping the saturation caused some mood dissonance in some scenes. A minor nitpick, but one I've seen echoed by others who have experienced multiple versions of Persona Persona 3. I have a similar critique for the cutscene direction comparing Fez and Reload. I felt personally that some Reload cutscenes went on too long or had odd choices that diminished the effect of certain scenes. The example that I've seen used over and over is the initial scene with the random person turning into a shadow. It just doesn't have the same impact in Reload that it did in Fez. This is not the case for every scene, and a lot of the important scenes are just as good if not better, but there's enough difference to be noticeable. On the other side of things, Portable doesn't have any cutscenes for the FEMC route, and that is unfortunate even if it was understandable given the budget. Across all versions, the music is incredible. Shoji Meguro is a wizard, and pairing with Lotus Juice for the rapping bits on the various songs was an inspired choice. Reload even added some new songs in, all of which were bangers, so the musical experience is excellent regardless of which version you play. The voice acting is an area that has had its ups and downs through the history of the versions. There are a lot of talented voice actors who have worked on the games, but the original was a little uneven when it came to performances and direction. Many of those performances were so great and iconic though, it came as a disappointment when Reload recast everyone for the English dub. With that being said, I think the Reload performances are just as good and more consistent than the originals, but this is a very subjective area so I'm sure you can find people who will agree with whatever opinion you may have. One area that has improved with every single version of Persona 3 has been the quality of life plus UX and UI. 
There are many improvements that have been introduced, such as increased fast travel options, free camera control, and more indicators of important deadlines and dates for the player. Persona 3 is a striking game, visually and auditorily, no matter how you wish to play it. But which version slash versions should you play? Most remakes become the definitive versions of their game. But I cannot say that is the case for Persona 3 Reload. I understand the reasons why Atlas slash Sega could not include the FEMC route for the remake, and why they made Episode Igus DLC, although the price tag is not something I can justify. The consequences of the decision, though, is that Reload is not the be-all and end-all of Persona 3. So let's break it down. You should play the original Persona 3 for nostalgia, if you played it before, novelty, if you're curious, or completionism because you just want to play every version. Persona 3 Fez is the original but just better, so that's the one I would really recommend for those who want the experience of how Persona 3 was back in the day, with the best harmony of themes and style. Persona 3 Portable is for those who might be intimidated by RPGs originally, or feel more comfortable with the visual novel style, and those who are interested in doing the female main character route. Persona 3 Reload is for those who want to play a modern game with modern RPG sensibilities in all areas, as well as those who just like how it looks and want to give it a try, plus old fans interested to see what was added to the experience. Feel free to mix and match as you wish, but that's my quick and dirty guide on that question. The main thing I encourage is to give whatever version interests you the most a try, because Persona 3 is a special game in all forms. Thank you for letting me ramble on and making it to the end of the video. I don't have as strong a personal connection to Persona 3 as I do to 4 or 5, but I respect the game a lot for what it did for the series and RPGs in general. It's a very good game and many people cite it as a huge joy and inspiration for them, so I felt that even if it had to be a long video, I would do my best to give Persona 3 its due. If you did enjoy it, I would appreciate any likes you were able to give the video, comment below your thoughts on Persona 3 from original to reload, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Persona 6 hopefully won't be too long, but there's always plenty to play and enjoy in the meantime. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and happy gaming.